Alright, now let's try to break it. So this worked pretty well for a flat surface. But what if we made things a little more complicated? So let's contain this. Way up front here, we have this curved surface included in our um, sample file. So I'm going to replace the flat surface with this curved surface. We're just going to see what happens. Now it freezes up because something went horribly wrong. Oh no. All right. I mentioned before, when things look really weird, odds are good it's a uh, data tree problem. So let's uh, debug our code to figure out why it didn't work when I switched to a curved surface. I'm going to begin by starting at the end and debugging things. Now the tree structure here looks OK. In fact, when I click, I'll notice that this is operating pretty well, um, but something else is going wrong. So I'm going to turn off or dis disable this whole section of code. I'm going to go backwards. How about my surfaces? How do they look? I notice that the surfaces appear wrong. OK, so the error is happening downstream of this, because it's already messed up by the time I get to here. Let's continue. Where is this coming from? This rectangle? The rectangle's wrong. Now these curves look good. I was able to get these panels, so this is correct. The distances, 143, 143, that appears okay. This is the problem, the plane. So I've identified that it's this component that's messing up, because it's output, these output rectangles and using this green button is very helpful for debugging. This doesn't look like what I expected. That looks good. This is wrong. And the problem is that I was putting in a single plane for every single uh, panel, which happened to be the right plane when it was a flat surface. But now that it's a curved surface, this is no longer the case. So what I need to do is to input a new plane for every single um, for every single panel here in order for this offset to work properly. Okay, so how do I get a plane that works for every single panel? Well, let's go back to our surface. So if each one of these is our subdivided surface, we want to get information about every single surface. There's a command called evaluate surface. And one of its outputs is a frame or a plane um, that gives us the information we need. But in order to use it, I need a surface, which I have, but I need this UV coordinate. There are several ways of doing this. You could type in a value or use the um, similar to what we did before. We could use this multi-dimensional slider. which worked for a few points, but not everyone. If I click reparameterize, now it works. Reparameterizing takes whatever its parameters happen to be, and it's going to simplify it to be between 0 and 1, which this is set up for. So this could work well, giving me a new frame. And what's this list? So I can use my uh, param viewer to double check. Okay, so with that, I could use this to replace here. But I also noticed, let's take a look at what this branch is. So they're all with three. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to have the same exact tree structure. Similar to items in a list, they will repeat as necessary. It automatically laces. So this has one branch and this has one branch, so it's going to apply them both together regardless of what the branch is called. So in this case, if I just plug this frame in, it still did not work. So what happened? What's going wrong? Well, it turns out that this really nice offset curve really needs to be on a flat plane. But the curve that I have, if we zoom in here, 
because it's a smooth surface. Notice that there, this is a, it's not a flat panel at all, but it's actually a curved surface. So we identified that part of the problem was our offset and how we need to make these panels flat rather than curved, which makes sense if you're trying to make a realistic panelized facade anyway. You're not really going to want to spend on a curved facade panel, right? So in order to do this, let's grab, uh, first deconstruct the surface, because we can just go ahead and rebuild these surfaces based on the outer four points. It's very similar to what we did before. We can go ahead and simplify these vertices. I now have a branching structure with four items each, which means that a, um, just like we made our, let's turn this off, just like we made our shades, excuse me, this looks terrible. Okay, just like we made our shades with four points, we can go ahead and grab all four points again. One, two, three, and four. And now I'm going to have, notice this difference here, this is the green one that I'm looking at. Um, nice flat surfaces. Now stop here. Do not plug this in to this. I actually did that. Uh, I think we're going to delete it from the recording. Um, and this just goes to show how important being careful with your data trees are. Because if you plug this branching structure with one surface per branch into this flat list, it's going to be repeating the script 140 times. So even if it only took um, a little bit of time to do this, it might explode into, uh, I think in my case here, this error caused a five minute delay. So be careful. Uh, and this is going to happen all the time, which I think is kind of funny to include this and not be ashamed of it in a tutorial about how important trees are. Um, I use Grasshopper all the time and even I make mistakes with this. So this is a common thing. Um, so be very careful, especially if you're working in the middle of a script like we are right here where we have a whole bunch of stuff happening downstream and all we want to do is make one little update. Uh, good practice is to maybe turn off everything downstream or uh, even to lock your solver, um, which, is, which shuts everything down. But the best thing to do is to be aware of your tree structures. So if these are my new surfaces. The big hint is that this is a dashed line. So if I want this to go into the subdivided surface, I would need to flatten it. And I'm okay using flatten in this case because I know I don't need to do anything else fancier downstream. This might cause problems later if I want to loop over this whole script again, um, but it's okay. We might get into that in another advanced tutorial, why flattening is a problem. But for now, I now have an appropriate list. And if I look at my original curve surfaces, I've now made them panelized. So let's plug this in. Now, fingers crossed, it worked perfectly. Yes. So now that I have a flat surface, this evaluate surface here worked and I was able to get the appropriate offset. And then if I were to go up here, let's turn this back on. I feel pretty confident that it's going to work. And it's creating those just fine. The one problem I see is that I have the windows on because my surfaces are still on. That looks pretty good. So we've now updated uh, the script to include more detailed information. With this evaluate surface, uh, I want to point out that this is a, a common problem that we often do, where we'll take a shortcut in writing the script the first time. So rather than use the actual plane of the panel, we used this XZ plane. Rather than using the normal of the surface, we used a Y vector. Anytime you plug in an actual value into something, um, meaning a, I, I call it hard coding, but it could be any value, whether it's from a slider or something else, um, 
recognize that you are putting in a, an explicit value and that the way a lot of parametric modeling works you may be better off always defining things parametrically related to something else. So if we would have begun by creating an offset curve not based on an x, y, or xz plane, we might have noticed right away that, hold on, I'm hard coding this plane. Is that always going to be the case? What I really want to do is to offset the curve based on the plane itself, which I could get by evaluating the surface and getting that plane. Same thing with creating the shade. I always wanted to be offset based on the normal of the surface. And in fact, this also may be a problem. So let's consider this. If I were to make our offsets quite large, notice they're all moving due south in the y direction. When I look at this in 3D, that's not what I want. I want this shade to be going perpendicular to the facade, not moving off in front of this other one. And that's because I also defined, I hard-coded in the unit y vector here, which is incorrect. Just like I hard-coded in the first time this plane. So now because I've already done this, um, I have a lot of the information I need. In the earlier parts of this volume, I mentioned creating your lattice structure. One of the most important things that I like to bring out um, when I'm coming up with this logic helps me prevent those kinds of mistakes. Because in addition, let's zoom into our lattice, which were these four points. All we did was collect those four points. Well, what if instead, and I'm going to go ahead and um, we'll just rebuild it. So rather than just grabbing the four points, I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to use this evaluate surface command in order to get the normal and this base plane. Uh, these are very, very useful things to do. And I'm going to show you one more method. Rather than using that MD slider, you can also take the area of the surface and then say surface closest point. Take the center point, take the surface, and this gives you a UV coordinate of the center point of the surface. This allows you to not reparameterize the surface. It might be a little slower because this command takes some time, um, but it might be more flexible. I just want to show you multiple ways. So now that I have this surface, um, I have the normal vector. And because it's a vector, I don't need. I can't really preview it. I'm going to call. I'm going to create a um, a relay that I can um, read. Because the whole point of creating the lattice is to collect the things that you want. So here I have my normal vector, and then with the frame, what I'm going to do is to deconstruct the frame or deconstruct the plane. Planes and frames are the same thing. And here I'm going to get the x, y, and z vectors. This is very, very useful because it allows me, and actually it's, um, in this case the z vector is going to be the normal as well. But having the x and y means that I can now use those vectors to say move things along the, uh, the facade here in order to um, build more complicated things. And then once you have those collected, actually let's again use a relay. Call that my x. And, and we already have the normal. If I want to confirm that these vectors are actually what I think, using the SDL line, you have a starting point, a direction, and if you type in a value, you can draw a line. So in this case, it's showing that, and you can see it if you zoom in on this plane, x is red, so x is going straight down, and y is going to be going the other way, to the right here. If you don't like these orientations, you can always maybe reverse the 
And for example, I would think that y should be straight up. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, straight up is going to be, based on what I'm seeing here, the opposite of that vector. Looks good. That's now what I'm going to call y. And x is going to be what y is. So confirming that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Let's look at z. There's the normal. Perfect. And now that I have these um, these vectors collected, I can reuse them throughout um, the modeling process to build any new thing that I want. So I have the key vectors, I have the key points. Um, it's very useful to build. So I now have a much more robust and complete uh, lattice or scaffolding for my for my parametric modeling. Oh, let's go ahead and update it. So in this case, I didn't actually want the unit y. I wanted the normal vector, which I now have. So I'm going to use the amplitude command. And I'm going to plug this number in instead. Now before I plug in, I want to make sure, does this make sense? Is that what I wanted? I no longer need this reverse command because this vector is going the correct direction. So if I plug it into here, it should all work. And notice it did. All I need to do is change this down to a reasonable value. And we're back.